edition of the Author's Corner, we have Gregory McLeod, and he's written a book called The Apathetical Man. And you think of that title, and I bet you it conjures up all kinds of thoughts. Gregory, thanks for joining us on the show. Oh, my pleasure. So give us the um, thumbnail version of what the book's about. Well, uh, putting it on a thumbnail would be like putting it on a train. Uh, It's a very um, big book. It's, uh, It's about hope. If I want to put in one word, it's about hope. Trying to get the hope out to other people. Like this uh, 12 step says in the 12 steps, it says having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to other alcoholics and addicts and to practice these principles in all our affairs. And, and so let's dive deeper into that, because you and I had a great conversation off the air. You have been through hell and back, and probably have put some people around you through that. Um, tell everyone what your story is and what brought you to this, um, what, what brought you to really finding God and changing your life. Well, it happened sort of fast, and then it slowed down, and I started getting my spiritual awakening the spiritual awakening didn't come overnight it took it a while for it all come together and once it all started coming together i started putting it on paper and then i could see it for myself what the spiritual awakening was i was at rehab remember i have been to rehab 10 times and i never got it i never got it I never could get nothing out of it. I couldn't understand why. I could never get nothing out of rehab. This is my tip time. This is my last time. I know I'm I'm dying. I was near death, spiritually and physically. This was my last chance on trying to find life abundantly. That day, the counselor put a group of us together, and he put us in rank from the least least of us that's gone to rehab to the most rehabs. And guess what? I was at the most rehabs. Mm. And the question was asked, he asked two questions. He asked, what can this rehab do for you? And what do you want out of this rehab? Miss Katie, as soon as he said that, I was I was down on the floor because nobody's ever asked me that question. What do I need? What mm. do I need? And as soon as that happened, I told him I didn't know. I didn't know, and immediately I felt scales come off my body. I felt weights come off my body because so I knew that it wasn't all physical. Now it's spiritual. I've been fighting a spiritual battle more more so than a physical battle. And you didn't know that until you were asked that question because you kept coming back to the well to try to figure out what was wrong. And when and when you and I talked, we talked about when you were a kid, you're talking about being 14 years old, for everybody listening, the, the magnitude of this, you were a full-blown alcoholic and drug user at that point, and this was where your life was headed. So once that question happens, then how did that drive you into the direction of finding, wow, this is, this is my spiritual awakening, this is what I was lacking? It hit me so hard because I never knew that it could be spiritual. I thought I knew God. I thought I had everything under under wraps, but I didn't know him. I didn't know him like I was supposed to know him. And that's the reason why I kept going back to the well, back to the well, back to the well, back to the well. But I, I stayed a big hole. Death. Because... I didn't grasp on to it during those other nine times until this last time did I grasp on to it, and it was spiritual. 
all the other times my whole life, 40 years, I've used 40, 45 years of using, I never could get it. And even the steps, the 12 steps are right there in front of me, and I never could get it. Wow, and then you finally do. You finally do. Uh, and I, w- I want to tell everyone that your book is called The Apathetical Man. We're speaking to Gregory, Gregory McLeod. You can get it on Amazon because I know there's people out there struggling. And once that happened, because, you know, the people around you, there's always doubters. When you're talking about 45 years of that, did people notice the change? Did, have they noticed this giant change in you and, and, and ask? Yes. You're, like, you're like the walking postcard for this now. Yes. Yes, they did. They were so proud that I got a spiritual awakening. I was back in church, and people looked at me like, God, (laughs) who is that? Oh, I'm Greg. What happened to you? I've been resurrected from the dead. Yeah. (laughs) Because it really felt like I've been resurrected from the dead. Wow. What's the best best part of that? That has to feel good. How long have you been clean? Right now, I've been clean 15 years. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Yes. And the purpose of the book is to give hope to other people out there, right? Yes. This book is based on hope. It says that to all living, there is hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. So if you're living, there's hope. If you're alive, there's no more hope. If you if you're dead, excuse me. If you're dead, there's no more hope. If you're alive, there's hope. No matter what you are. Wow. Was it tough to write the book? Was it tough to write the book? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I hit sometimes. I. I it was just. I can't believe I I actually went through this stuff. I'm like, I should be dead. Right. I should be dead. I've been through ten, five to ten overdoses. Some of them major. Landed up in the hospital. They are. Been through five, five to six major wrecks, car wrecks. Fell off bridges and cliffs, and drug using, DWIs, and I still couldn't get it. But I got it that day when I finally got hope. It wasn't all the what he said; it was how he said it. It was like God had put him there in front of me to tell me that the counselor. It was like he had put him there at that split moment to tell me, hey, this is your day. This is your spiritual awakening. Take it or leave it. And I took it. I jumped on it. But writing the book, yeah, it was hard. It was it was hard going back through it all. <laughs> So writing the book, The Apathetical Man, and being clean for this amount of time, what does that feel like? <laughs> well, I could laugh and joke. I could laugh about it now. Yeah. I could finally laugh and have joy now, where for a long time I didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel a thing. I was zombalized. I was just unmobile for so many years because of drugs and alcohol. I lost so many jobs, good-paying jobs, because of doing drugs. I mean, I've had a lot of good jobs, and I thank God for each one of them and the people that work there for putting up with me because I don't know how they put up with me for the time they did, but they did. But uh, but I give the glory to God. What do people think now? You said this, they see you in church, and, and at first it was shocking, but what do, what do some of those people say to you now that they see you and you're this different man? Oh, they'll throw their thumbs up. Uh, you got it now, man. 
<laughs> That's great. I love it. I love it. And you said this already. We talked about the apathetical man. You can get it on Amazon and it, it offers hope and that, you know, there's the spiritual awakening if you um, read the story, because that's an amazing, amazing story. Gregory, thank you so much for sharing it with us. You're welcome. Can I just say one thing before we close? Yeah. Uh, to all the addicts and to all the alcoholics, and to all those that are down in the streets and in the hotel rooms and in the, in the slammers, just know that there is a higher power greater than yourself that can lead you and restore you to sanity. And if you admit to God and to others and have another human being, then the exact nature of our wrongs will be admitted. We need to seek prayer, meditation, to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for the knowledge of His will and us and the power to carry that out, having a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps. If you want a spiritual awakening, you got to do the steps. Wow. Very, very powerful. Gregory, thanks for sharing your story. Okay. Thank I'm you. I'm glad that you gave me the chance. <laughs>